What would you have done though if he had said, ah, that's just my mom? You can't do those things and focus on anxiety at the same time. Right, I think it was so misunderstood. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Fascinating Womanhood channel. On our channel, we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships. I am Cherry Lynn, and I'm here with my mom, Dixie Andalyn Forsyth. Hi. Hi. We're here together today, and we're doing another Mini Monday for you all. If you're new to Mini Mondays, it's just a time where we take a question from the audience and we answer it really quickly. Keep in mind, these questions are really basic and very short so we don't have a huge story to go off of so we're just going to answer it as best we can today we are taking on a subject of a woman that is reading the original fascinating womanhood from 1969 so it's a little bit outdated so we're going to address some of the outdatedness from that book and answer the question and maybe you can even touch on why you updated some of these things yeah i'm glad for this question it gives me that yeah. opportunity so. yeah so it has to do with a man being the provider and a woman being the stay at home but what do you do if you are divorced and you're trying to you have a child date someone new you have a child can you still become the homemaker so i'm just going to go ahead and read the question i am thoroughly enjoying the original edition of fascinating womanhood 14th printing 1969 so this is really early this is an early book. I'm 41, divorced, and realize now that I was doing all the wrong things. I now have a very masculine boyfriend who lives across town. I have had a crush on him since I was 14, so I don't want to screw this up. I just finished reading chapter 9, Man the Provider. My question is this, how can I apply this to my situation right now? I have to work because I am not married and have a nine-year-old son to support. I'm already deep into showing that I'm capable of providing for myself. Is it possible to backtrack and encourage him that when we are married, I would love to take on the role of keeper at home? I don't want to scare him off of marriage, but I sincerely believe everything I read about fascinating womanhood because I did all of the wrong way examples in the book during my first marriage and it failed. I'm working hard to train myself to use the right responses to our general situations or his moody times and work exhaustion. But I'm having trouble thinking of how to properly apply this one. Okay, first of all, it sounds like they're not like engaged or anything. Right. She's, they're just maybe early on. And so we don't know. <laughs> well, it sounds like. Yeah. So I'm going to assume that it is. If they, they're not in a committed relationship, I wouldn't bring it up at all. Right. Because that might scare them off. That's if true. If you say, if, you know, I'd like to be a stay-at-home mom, that scares a lot of guys off. But actually, this is this is one of the reasons that I updated my mother's book because she she was not a professional writer and she sometimes said things that in a way that kind of got misunderstood because of the way it was written if that makes sense so i knowing her as well as i did i i kind of clarified it so that i i took out parts that would mix people up and we also live in a time where there's many men perhaps even a majority of men depending on what country you live in who have been raised by women and been taught that women maybe even should be employed. So we, you have to consider that. When my mother wrote her book, originally it came out in 1963, the, the culture was different. Yeah. And so you have to deal with men's expectations, which I'm not, I don't know that she knows what his expectations are. We certainly don't. The most important thing about Man the Provider is remembering that men don't have children. And because they don't, they have to have something where they're needed, their meaning in their life. And so providing is is something that they can do and do well. And a lot of times women have to work. And so this is where people got mixed up on yeah. man, the provider that you must stay at home. And that implies that even if you have no children or your children are grown, nowadays, couples don't tend to have large families like they used to. So women have the majority of their lives, even if they stay home for a few years when their children are really small, uh, if they can, they still have decades where they can do many things. It's, so, the new book, Timeless, addresses is more geared for that. So, But the most important thing is I would treat him like he is, like you say, a very masculine man and appreciate that he is, he is a guy with a career, 
who wants to provide and you appreciate that, whether you actually do it every day of your life or don't do it or stay at home every day of your life is not the main thing. It's the attitude mm-hmm. and the way you treat him. Well, she didn't really include whether or not she yearns for that stay at home. She didn't True. include if she if she enjoys her job. We don't really know any of those details. So if she genuinely wants to work or even if it's just part time, she probably needs to figure that out and not rely on this kind of narrow minded. Well, I will, I want to be a homemaker because I made mistakes in the past and I need to be a homemaker. You know, you may have had a different situation now. And Helen Andelin was never, never meant to send the message of women should never work. She never meant to send that message. As you kind of mentioned earlier, I think she just, because of the time she lived in, she was speaking to a different audience. And remember when she wrote her book, there were eight of us kids growing up. Not one of them was grown. For her, in yeah. her world, it was she like was it was di- never She was in a different end. place. Yeah, totally exactly. Di- totally different. So she, in a way, she probably couldn't imagine having everyone grown and what she would do. But she uh, worked uh, as a, you know, in fascinating womanhood. And women criticized her saying, right. hey, you're working. But she thought, right. I'm not working for money. I'm working to help people. So as far as, so that kind of clears up, I think the intent of fascinating womanhood and working women we're never saying it's you shouldn't work we're just saying if you can stay home it's a it's a great benefit if especially if you have small children especially it's a huge benefit it's very valuable now that's that side of it the next side of it is how should she express that to this new man when the time is right so what do you think about that well when the time is right means that they're really close and i assume you're getting to know each other and you will talk about values and how you feel about this how you feel about that and I wouldn't jump into how do you feel about being a stay-at-home mom unless you're about engaged because that's that's assuming that you're going to have a life together. I feel like it will come up in yeah. one way or another and maybe not the entire subject, but perhaps little by little. I don't know this man. I don't know how he is or what his opinions are, but I just have this intuition that it will come up slowly but surely. And you need to be ready for those moments when it does come up with your with your take and on I it. Would, my goal would be to find out how he feels. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, that's about not this? threatening. How do you, that's a good idea. you know, when it comes up, how do you feel about it? And then you don't have to say anything of your opinions. So you find out about how he feels. And if he feels the way you do, you don't have to say anything. If he has an opposing view on it, you should also be thinking about what you might want to say if he does. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are really rigid and, and you are really, really are saying to yourself, I want to be a homemaker. I want to stay home. This is what I want to do. How are you going to respond? If it were me, I might share some of my dreams with him and just, Mm -hmm. I've always wanted this. I've always dreamed Mm -hmm. of this, you know, slowly though. I think if you just bring it up out of the blue, it's going to seem like he's going to feel pressured. Well, yeah, you don't. And the other, the other thing is I doubt none of us have any idea why the first marriage didn't work out, but it probably wasn't just because of the, of the one stay thing. at home mom thing. Yeah. And, the, and it, I'm sure it was. It rarely is. Just no, not thing. just that one thing. And in fact, that isn't even the most important thing. The most important thing is in understanding men, femininity, yeah. and those things. The stay at home mom is more to do with raising children because if you have no children, it's not even a subject. Right. And you, the principles of staff, fascinating womanhood still are vitally important. Right. Okay. Hope that answers your question out there. <laughs> Thank you so much for asking this one. I think this is a really, really important question. We're so glad that you asked. Yes. And for anyone else watching, if you have a question that you would like to submit for us to answer on another Monday, we'll put the email on the screen for you and you can send that our way and we'll take a look and hopefully choose your question for a future mini Monday. And we're here every week. So don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. It helps our channel grow. And we also have videos that come out on Saturday. So you definitely have to subscribe to make sure you connect with us every time we have videos come out. All the places you can find us on social media are also attached to this video along with all of Dixie's books and workbooks. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.